Hello everyone, I welcome you all to the online lecture series organized by IPLS Academy. Topic of the lecture is on gut microbiota and its effect on human health. As we know, over the last hundred years, with the industrialization of our food supply, our diet has changed dramatically. The highly processed food, the high sugar content, high fat content, low fiber diet has substantially altered our gut bacteria. The food we eat not only feeds our fat cells but also determines what kind of inner garden we are growing in our guts. This garden is filled with bugs that determine more about your health and your emotional and mental well-being that you ever imagined. Getting your gut bacteria healthy is one of the most important things you can do to get and stay healthy. If your bacteria are sick, so are you. Before going to the lecture, I am introducing myself, Dr. Kajal Sharma, Doctor of Philosophy in Microbiology from Shodini University, Solon. Currently working as an assistant professor in microbiology at Guru Kashi University, Bhatinda, Punjab. I have expertise in applied and food microbiology, received various awards and prizes for research presentations in international and national conferences. More than five years of experience in teaching and research, around 10 publications and peer reviewed journals, and one patent published under Indian Patent Act. I have organized many conferences, seminars, industries, targeted activities. So, let's have a look on the content which I am covering under this topic. We will discuss about the definition of gut bacteria, microbacteria or microbiota, functions of gut microbiota, importance of gut microbiota, its impact on gut microbiota, diet impact on gut microbiota and its effect on human health. So, what is gut microbiota? Everything you always wanted to know about the gut microbiota. The word microbiota represents an assemble of microorganisms that resides in a previously established environment. Human beings have clusters of bacteria in different parts of the body, such as in the surface of teeth or deep layers of skin, that is also known as skin microbiota, the mouth, that is known as oral microbiota, and so on. Our gut microbiota contains tens of trillions of microorganisms, including at least 1,000 different species of known bacteria, with more than 3 million genes, that is, 150 times more than human genes. Microbiota can in total play up to around 2 kg. That is one third of our gut microbiota is common to most people while two thirds are specific to each one of us. In other words, I can say that the microbiota in your intestine is likely an individual identity Card. It means there is a specific bacteria for particular individual. Now, I am talking about the good and bad bacteria. The human body encounters both good and bad bacteria daily. Good bacteria are non-pathogenic ones. They are not disease-causing. Bad bacteria are disease-causing. So, the human body encounters these two kinds of bacteria daily. To microorganisms, the human body represents an attractive environment and source of nutrients. Bacteria that we, that we call good help us digest our food and protect us from bad bacteria. Those are pathogenic, disease causing, that can make us sick or even kill us, the bad bacteria. Without Good bacteria, we would die according to the statement given by United States Department of Energy. 
good bacteria lives in our digestive system, on our skin, in our mouth. Bad bacteria may get into our body by contaminated food, bones, abrasion or any other environmental factor. We have 10 raised to power 13 to 10 raised to power 14 microbes that is 1000 to 35,000 of species. Most of them are still not identified. Weight up to 3 to 5 LBS and its genome is 150 fold of our whole genome. So these are the good bacteria such as bacteroids, Provitella, Fusobacterium, Eubacterium, Pneumococcus, Peptococcus, Peptostreptococcus, Escherichia, and Lactobacillus. Bacteroids alone constitute about 30% of all bacteria in the gut. As, it, as its name states, gut microbiota is harbored in the intestine. As mentioned earlier, one of the main area in our body that comes into contact with external environment like skin and lungs. What are the functions of gut microbiota? It helps us to ferment carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are sugars. They are, for example, any kind of sugar like glucose, sucrose, maltose, fructose, and it helps in absorption of starch, plant fiber, pectin into short chain fatty acids like acetic acid, propanoic acid, butyric acid. It, it also helps to digest proteins, for example, like collagen and elastin. It helps in repression of pathogenic microbial growth. It kills the it helps to kill the bacteria by competing it with for nutrition and attachment. It also produces bacteriocells. Bacteriocells are proteinaceous compounds that inhibit the growth of pathogenic microorganisms or pathogenic bacteria and it also produces lactic acid. It prevents inflammatory bowel diseases in intestine. It also prevents allergies. Bacteroids and bifidobacteria prevents allergies caused by Clostridium difficile and Staphylococcus aureus. In this slide, I'm talking about the importance of gut microbiota, how it is important for human body. As we know, the whole world is facing a virus pandemic that is COVID-19. So, it is important to have a healthy lifestyle to boost our immune system. The coronavirus pandemic has turned the whole world's attention towards immune system development. The immune system as you know, it is the body's multi-level defense mechanism against harmful bacteria, viruses and other microorganisms. So, in that context, my gut microbiota plays an important role in the immune system performing a barrier effect against bacteria, viruses and other organisms. A healthy and balanced gut microbiota is key to ensuring proper digestive functioning. Taking into account the major role gut microbiota plays in the normal functioning of the body and the different functions it accomplishes, experts nowadays consider it as an organ. However, it is an acquired organ as babies are born sterile. That is, Intestine colonization type starts right after the birth and evolves as we grow. Now I will discuss about the development of gut microbiota. So the development of gut microbiota starts at birth. The newborn digestive tract is quickly colonized by good microorganisms from the mother the environment in which the delivery takes place, the air, etc. It have it shows impact on gut microbiota 
gifts of the infant. From the third day, the composition of the intestinal flora is de directly dependent on how the infant is fed. Breast fed babies, gut microbiota evolved. For example, it is mainly dominated by the phytobacteria compared to babies nourished with infant formulas. Scientists consider that by the age of 3, microbiota becomes stable and similar to that of adults, continuing its evolution at a steadier rate throughout the whole life. This is the representation of the development of gut microbiota from birth up to adulthood. The gastrointestinal tract of the fetus is sterile until birth after which the newborn is initially colonized depending on delivery mode the initial communities of microorganisms tend toward a skin like configuration during the first weeks of life there is a reduced activity of tlrs potentially allowing the necessary formation of a stable bacterial community in the gut as the infant grows with the introduction of solid foods, the microbiota diversity increases, the, the microbial good microorganisms start developing and it increases with the consumption of solid foods. And the community co converges toward an adult like state. At the same time, the immune system learns to differentiate between good bacteria and bad bacteria, the pathogenic bacteria. By the adulthood, a relatively stable community composition it is achieved, but it varies from different individuals, dominated mostly by bacteroids and firmicutes. Different diseases are characterized by significant changes in the microbiota and associated changes in the production of cytokines for example interleukin 4 interleukin 1 beta and pnf factor now the effect of diet on the gut microbiota what kind of dietary pattern we are taking we are consuming for example western diet vegetarian diet. What type of foods we are taking? Whole grain, fruits and nuts, vegetables and legumes. The food constituent also shows significant effect on gut microbiota. The food constituents like fiber, carbohydrates, fat, protein and phytochemicals. Phytochemicals like antioxidant. It helps to remove inhibit the free radical which is producing inside our body you might also consider an elimination diet to address food sensitivities complete removal of gluten dairy yeast corn soya and egg for a week or two to reduce inflammation and so that your gut can be healed Re-inoculation your gut with good bacteria, for example, with the help of probiotic. Repair the gut lining with omega-3 fatty acids, zinc, glutamine, and other healing nutrients. These are the factors known to impact the gut microbiota. Even in the perfect world, our gut has a hard time keeping things balanced. But in our world, there are many things that knock our digestive system off balance. Those include a junk diet, a junk food diet. This nutrient poor diet makes all the wrong bacteria, bad bacteria or we can say pathogenic bacteria and yeast grow in the duct leading to a damaged gut. Medication overuse. Anti-inflammatories, for example, antibiotics, acid uh, blocking drugs, and steroid damage the gut and block normal digestive functions. 
infections and gut imbalances. These include small intestinal bacteria overgrowth, yeast overgrowth and parasites. Toxic overload. It includes mercury and mold like toxins. The toxic production is overloaded because of the mold and mercury present inside our gut. Inadequate digestive enzymes. If we do not have adequate amount of digestive enzyme, it will contribute to have or lack digestive enzyme functions and have lack normal digestive functions like stress as acid blocking medication and zinc zinc deficiency can all contribute to lack or of adequate digestive enzyme functions this is the schematic representation of the role of gut microbiota in human health and diseases giving some examples of inputs and outputs if we take proper amount of probiotics and dietary fiber it will help in increase the short chain fatty acid production it will increase the antioxidant production it will improve lipid metabolism it will improve low gut inflammation it will reduce risk of some other kind of pathogenic infections and the excessive intake of sugar for example fructose and saturated fatty acids excessive use of protein consumption it will lead to decrease short chain fatty acid production increase lipopolysaccharide production and it will increase the cardiovascular disease risk so ultimately it will cause life threatening diseases the effect on human health obesity stress anxiety and depression how the gut bacteria is helping the humans to have a good health as we know obesity is a medical condition of excess fat accumulation which has adverse health effect and reduce life expectancy obesity increases the likelihood of various diseases particularly heart disease type 2 diabetes obstructive sleep apnea and certain type of cancer and osteoarthritis one of the most serious public health problem of the 21st century is obesity in 2030 the american medical association classified obesity as a disease but this our healthy gut microbiota helps in regulation of fatty acid uptake by suppression of fasting induced adipose factor this factor it is a protein secreted by adipose tissues liver and intestine and it helps to inhibit the activity of lipoprotein lipase which is an key enzyme in the hydrolysis of the release of fatty acid for transport into cell so it helps this good gut microbiota uh, helps to decrease the fat excess fat accumulation now i will talk about the stress anxiety and depression stress what is stress stress is a person's response to a stressor such as an environmental condition or a stimulus stress is a body's way to react to challenge in a fight situation it leads to rising blood pressure breathing become more rapid digestive system slow down pulse rate increases immune system goes down muscles become weak and we do not sleep it heightens state of alertness so in that context gut microbiota have led to bacillus species and bifidobacterium species which produce an 
antidepressant substance which is known as GABA 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 natural function is to reduce the activity of the neurons to which it binds so GABA it utilizes the over excited neutron neurons and there is an anti stress drug benzodiazepine in case of depression anxiety as we know serotonin a contributor to feeling of well being and happiness about 80% of human body total serotonin is located in in the enterochromaffin cells in the gut Bifidobacteria species can increase the concentration of tryptophan in the blood plasma that is a precursor of serotonin and so it acts as an antidepressant. So from this topic we can recapitulate that we need an improved understanding of the dynamics and impact of maternal microbiota transfer and the influence of infant nutrition on the development of gut microbiota in early childhood. We also need to elucidate the influence of host genome variation and the fetal environment on the future gut microbiota. It will be important to map the impact of early antibiotic use on the developmental ecology function of the microbiota during childhood. A deeper knowledge is required regarding how variation in the gut microbiota influences drug metabolism, its availability, and drug toxicity, with the repercussions for patient stratification and personalized health care. About the future prospects of gut microbiota, we need to strategize, and it should be developed for the in vitro culture of the complete microbiota in order to elucidate bacterial species and microbial interactions. Comprehensive top-down system biology analysis should be applied to changing immunological and metabolic interaction between the host and its gut microbiota. In the end, I want to quote that every day we live and every meal we eat, we influences the great microbial organ inside us for better or for worse. So, thank you for the listening.